What's up, guys? Welcome back to Picture Breakdown. This is going to be my breakdown of Loki Episode 3, Lamentis. I'm going to be going through this episode shot by shot for interesting visual details, hidden references, as well as any background information that you might need to know. But first, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified for every future Loki Episode Breakdown. Spoiler warning for Loki Episode 3. Alright, so let's start off with the title of this episode, Lamentis, which is the planet of Lamentis 1, the moon that they ended up on, and failed to get off of. In the comics, Lamentis 1 is inhabited by miners and wealthy elites, these two classes we saw when they were boarding in the train. Again in the comics, in 2077, the date we saw when they arrived, Lamentis broke apart and its fragments crashed into the moon. The wealthy inhabitants of Lamentis 1 attempted to evacuate on an ark, but perished along with everyone else on the moon when the ark was destroyed by falling debris from Lamentis. So pretty much for this one, Marvel just copied and pasted the entire story for how this civilization was destroyed. The Marvel logo comes up, and played in the background is the song Demons by Haley Kiyoko. In the song, it says multiple times, I've got demons in my head, which is describing Sylvie, who's described as a devil both in this episode and the first episode, when the kid points at the stained glass of a devil. It's talking about her ability to get inside the heads of people and to get them to do what she wants them to. Alright, so we open with Hunter C-20 and Sylvie in an illusion of a restaurant. Hunter C-20 gets a brain freeze and Sylvie says that they happen when It permeates the roof of your mouth and freezes the synapses in your brain so your memories are literally frozen in place. What Sylvie is unknowingly doing here is describing what she's doing to Hunter C-20 at this moment. As stated later in this episode, she uses one of C-20's memories and freezes it in her mind to use to her advantage. Sylvie gets into the TVA and tries to take control over one of the guards, but this doesn't work because as stated in episode 1, magic doesn't work in the TVA. Loki gets into the TVA through the time door that Sylvie went through, and when he gets to her, he flips his knives the same way that he did in the trailer to Thor Ragnarok. Renslayer shows up, and Loki grabs a tempad, sending them to Lamentis 1. Sylvie looks at the tempad, and it says that it's out of power. The reason for this is because last episode, she opened 42 separate time doors at once. They start walking to try to find the power to charge the tempad, and Sylvie introduces herself to Loki. I think what Marvel could be doing is merging two different characters of Lady Loki and Sylvie Lushton, aka Enchantress, who in the comics has the ability, along with a few other abilities, of mental manipulation being able to plant mental suggestions and alter others' mind to meet her will. This is almost exactly what Sylvie's doing to control other people. In the comics, Enchantress was given her powers by Loki himself, so this could be the tie-in that Marvel wanted. They get on the train, and Loki gets super drunk. He starts singing, and then he does this. Another. This is a callback to when Thor did the same thing, but instead with a coffee mug in Thor 1. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another. <laughs> They get into a fight with the security guards on the train, and Loki shoots some green magic out of his hands, yet another ability that we haven't seen him do yet before, like the telekinesis he used last episode. Sylvie gets into a headlock by one of the guards, and Loki chucks one of his knives to try to hit the guard, but it's a terrible shot, which is most likely because he's super drunk. They get off the train, and they start walking to the Ark, and as they are, Sylvie says that C-20 was a regular person, and Loki responds by saying, I was told that everyone who works at the TVA was created by the timekeepers. That's ridiculous. They're all variants, just like us. This is huge, and there's a lot to unpack here. So the first implication is that during the trials, if a variant is not just as guilty, they get their mind wiped and they start to work for the TVA. The second implication is that since the timekeepers are lying about creating the TVA workforce, that means that they're almost definitely lying about everything else, probably meaning that they're evil. They get into the town where the Ark is, and the planet Lamentis splits in half, sending tons of debris down onto the town. They start running, and a tower falls on them. But Loki catches it with his telekinesis, using the same position as when he tried to use the magic in the first episode in the TVA. This is incredible telekinesis. Moving a giant tower is a massive feat of power for Loki. But it's actually not, because he isn't using telekinesis in this moment. If you look closer, the tower doesn't just move back. The dust around it moves towards it, and the tower gets reconnected with the building that it was previously attached to. This means that Loki reversed time on the tower. And which Infinity Stone did Loki pick up in the first episode? Yep, 
the time stone. He's pretty much for sure using this time stone in this instance to save them, which is probably going to be pretty helpful in the future. I have three theories to how they're going to get off the moon. The first one is that they're going to use the tempad. And I know what you're saying, but the tempad's actually destroyed. But we don't know that because the thing is literally able to open doors through time and space. It's hard to see how it would break after just a fall from a train. A GoPro would have probably survived that fall. I think that Loki projected an illusion of the broken tempad to Sylvie, since she never actually touched it. I think that they can still use the power source of the Ark to power it up and get back to the DVA. The second theory is pretty simple. They find a way to create variance energy. All they need to do is something that will affect the timeline in any way, and this would end up with the TVA going there, and they would steal their tempad. My third and final theory is the one that I'm betting the most on. So in the final scene, the arc gets blown up, and Sylvie walks away, but Loki stays standing there. Also, remember we established that Loki most likely has the time stone that he got from the TVA. I believe that Loki's going to pull a Doctor Strange and reverse the destruction of the Ark and fly it away so it doesn't get destroyed. The second option with the time stone is that if the Tempad is actually destroyed, he could use the time stone on that, fixing it and maybe sending it so far back in time that it has enough power to work again. My thoughts on this episode were kind of mixed. Overall, I think the action was very well done, and I was interested in the reveal of a few things, like the origins of the TVA workers and the apparent reveal that Loki has a time stone. But I'm not really a fan of the way they structured this episode. It kind of felt like the episode was incomplete, lacking the whole story, and we have to wait an entire week to see how the story ends. Another problem I had with this episode was the planet, and the scenes while they were walking. I think that you could really tell that they were walking in front of a green screen. I don't know, but the lighting really made the alien landscape seem kind of fake to me. However, those are just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the episode. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to be notified for every future Loki episode breakdown. If you know someone who's watching Loki, please consider sharing this with them, put down any questions or comments, and let me know how you think they're going to get off Lamentus 1. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next breakdown.